What's up, everybody? Maddie C Sports for you and me, the late edition. I'm here with my boy here, Jalen Renan. Going boxing for his favorite boxer, baby. Boxer's favorite boxer. And what number are we going for? Number nine. Yep, nine. Nine and oh. Nine and oh. Nine and oh. So um so we'll start off. So I know this is a tough thing, but how is it like going into a fight? You're supposed to fight one guy, which I understand had a, a relative who was very sick. But the fact that what's it like for a boxer when so many people drop out on you? I know you had, did you have three people drop out on you? Yeah, three or four. Um, It's annoying. But at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not at the upper echelon yet where like I'm fighting like Danny Garcia's and stuff like that. I'm fighting, I'm still fighting regional guys. You know what I mean? So when they pull out, it doesn't matter because whoever whoever gets filled in, like don't don't get don't get it twisted. If I do the wrong thing, they can beat me, but I should be popping on all pistons. So whoever they put in the ring with me, I should win. You know what I mean? That's just how I look at it. it. Don't matter who it is or where they're coming from, they shouldn't be able to beat me. So I don't really get too frustrated because I I'm not like a lot of the fighters around New England that just stayed in their like little borough and fought the same guys over and over. I fought everywhere. I fought in Cali, fought in New York, fought Texas, you feel me? Um, I fought Rhode Island, fought out here. I went I went everywhere. I sparred everywhere. So I've seen a lot of styles. And I have right. and I don't and I don't just have one style myself. I have a lot of styles also. So whatever gets in the ring is what gets in the ring and we adjust from there. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, like Mike Tyson says, everyone got a game plan so they get punched in their face. And that's, that's just the God honest truth. So, I mean, I always have a basic plan, but we always build in the fight as well. You know what I mean? Like, all right, kid, the dude's doing this, so now do this. He's doing that to do that. Oh, he's doing that to stop you from doing that. So, okay, do this. You know what I mean? You got to learn in the fight as well. You got to be, be being a good pro is knowing how to adjust under pressure and not just being like, all right, the game plan don't work. I'm not. I'm just going to lose. We got to figure it out and we're going to win. You know what I mean? That's just the name of the game is win. And obviously you've been doing that very well. And, you know, you got a guy here, um, Mike Ogundo, who is a Kenyan fighter. Um, he's pretty much a journeyman, uh, 16 and 15. You're going up against him. He's a hard hitting little guy. Um, so for that guy to change his from, from coming from where you are, like you fighting this guy who you're supposed to fight to him, do you see a major difference or is this just another walk in the park? I never look at any of my fights as a walk in the park. I mean, he's coming in there to win. He's coming in there to take my head off. He's coming in there to spoil my shit. I'm going in there to take everything I can muster and send him on his destruction and come out there with another victory if God if, if God grants it a KO. But it's never no easy fight because at the end of the day, I'm human. He's human. Same thing I'm getting hit with, he's getting hit with. So it, it's never no easy fight. It's more of, I, I just, I do this, you know what I mean? I don't... I'm not. I'm not really worried. Like we got a referee in gloves. You feel me? Like, what's the worst that can happen? I don't. You know what I mean? I got a good chin, and I'm in shape. I'm training hard. I got great sparring. I'm sparring with Olympians and everything. So, I mean, I just feel like I'm very prepared and ready to go for the fight. And I can tell. And you know, we've talked many times about boxing and how it's how it's you know it, it it has it's not on the comeback but it's on a level where people are starting to rise again you know and i always talk to you like top rank and showtime and stuff like that but for for the regional part of it right now do you feel like it's not enough right now like you just want to jump right into the next level or is it like you want to have a couple more fights before you 
Um, it depends. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's prize fighting. If it makes money, it makes sense. So, depending on who the opponent is, and then depending on what the pay is, I could jump up tomorrow and go fight someone good. I believe I'm on that level, and I'm not scared to show it. But now, with all that being said, I'm not going to go fight someone for $3,000 and he's like 15 and 0. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It got to make sense. And even in, you have to, you, and as when you're building a fighter, you got to move up accordingly. You know what I mean? Once you hit, like, you move up, you move up accordingly. And then once you hit, like, 15 and 0, 16 and 0, that's when it's like, all right, now let's look for, the big, the, the big pay, the big, the big fight, and when I say big fight, I mean like I, I'll fight someone else that's like fifteen and zero. Let's see who's the better out of us two. So I, boom, I win. Now I'm on to the next one. Now a couple more fights. Now we are fighting someone that's like twenty one and 0, 21 and three, twenty one and one. You know what I mean? Moving, and then that's how you're supposed to move it once you get to a certain point. But you can't fight, you can't be fighting pasty ass like battle fat ass dudes. You got to be fighting real fighters as you come up. And even even if it's a journeyman, it got to be a strong, talented journeyman. You know what I mean? Just because they got a lot of losses don't mean they suck. And you got to look at who they fought. You got to look at who stopped them. If they've never been stopped and they done fought some good guys, then it's like, I you got, you got your work cut out for you. Just because an ally don't mean the dude can't fight. And that's what right. a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. They could have a whole bunch of losses. That could be what they do. But they train, they bust their ass, they get better, and they're a fighter. They fight. You know what I mean? So you gotta you gotta look at it both both ways. I I just make sure my comp, my competition I fight is always no one's coming to lay down. They ain't coming for a check. They coming because they want to win. Yeah, and you know the the thing about that, and I like how you said that with a guy who who's like thirty six and like. I don't know, 27. They they look at that as a as a bad record, but nobody understands the the dedication, the will that guys still have. They're not they're not bad fighters, some of them. Let's and not, they let's they, not get it, let's not get it twisted. Nah. I'm gonna keep it a band. You I don't like I don't like people that got crazy ass records like that. Because it comes to a point where it's like, all right, bro, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like once you once you got like twenty something losses and you got more losses than wins, it's like, all right, dog, it's time to hang them up. You're not pretty, you're not gonna do anything in the sport. You're getting hit for no reason. You know what I mean? That's just that's just my opinion. I like me personally, I couldn't be out here like that. I got too much pride. If I can't be the best, then I'm good with it. You know what I mean? And if I and, and if not the best, if I can't be at the at the upper echelon at the top. Performing good, I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna retire. What the fuck am I getting punched in the face for? I'm not getting. It's not for fun. It's to be the best. It's to get to the bag. If I can't make it to the upper echelon without doing, without getting my wins and doing what I'm supposed to do, it's not the sport for me. I will get a job. A lot, a lot of people they don't, they don't want to do that. They be like, oh, 23 and 23. Oh, I'm gonna win a world title. No, you're not. They will never let you win a world title. You will never no. ever be up in there. No. No, you're lucky if you get maybe like a five loss, maybe even then. No, nah, you can have some losses like Gabe Rosado, Glenn Johnson, all them. They had losses, you know what I mean? But they were at the top upper echelon and they was beating top guys as well. You know what I mean? And that's my thing. If you're up here just taking L's, getting your ass whooped all the time, give it up. But if you up here like oh, I took L over here, but I beat I beat this dude, all right, but I lost to this guy, but I beat that guy. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's consistency where it's like, all right, like say um you lose to Keith, let's say you beat Keith Thurman, but you lost to Boosie. But then you beat Sean Porter and then you lost to Crawford. But then you um beat Danny Garcia, but then you lost to Spence. Those are all right losses. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, like, you, they're you tough losses. Bounce back and, yeah, you can bounce back and do something like that. You're 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 winning and losing at the top of the game. Now, if you, let's say you spot you bought Spencer and lost, and then Crawford and lost, and then you got beat by Danny Garcia, then you got beat by um 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 give me another name Boots, and then you got beat by Adrian Broner. It's like all right, 
you got five L's back to back to back, and the last guy you lost to, he's not really at the upper upper echelon no more. It might be time for you to hang it up. Not no no disrespect to Adrian Broner. It's just the album guys I named, and then there's him who's still at the top, but not at the top with them anymore. You know what I mean? He's more of like A minus B plus right now. So with that being said, if you're not getting, if you're just taking all them L's and you're not getting paid nothing. I say save. I say save your 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 marbles. You know what I mean. That's just that's me. I'm not. I want to be able to enjoy my life after boxing. I don't want to be all and messed up. I don't want to have messed up eyes and everything. That's why I fight the way I fight. Like I bang out, don't get it twisted. But you're not getting whatever you hit me with. You earning, and whatever I hit you with is skill. It's a difference. You know what I mean. And you mm-hmm. got to be smart in the sport. You got to know what you're doing. And you got to do it right. You got you you got to hold, and this is you got to hold yourself as a king or a queen, depending on who, who you is. You got to know what it is. You got to know who's in front of you, and you got to know what you're doing. And you got to work your ass off. If you ain't work, if, if you wait on the verge of like, I can't do this. I want to quit. You're not working hard enough. Almost every workout I do, I get to the point where I'm so tired that like I don't know if I can finish, and I will myself to finish. You got to do that. You know what I mean? If you're not doing it, mm-hmm. then maybe this is not, you're not in the right sport because it's going to get time in that fight where it's really hard and this dude's just as tired as you, but he wants it. He's hurt, but he wants it. Like, Are you are you going to push through that broken nose? Are you going to push through the fire that you feel in your lungs? Mm-hmm. Are you going to push through it when it gets hard? That's what people got to you gotta see. Jermaine Ortiz said something that stuck with me. And I don't know, I don't know where he got it from, but he's when I, I heard him say it, he said, you, this is a sport where you should never ever be comfortable. You should never be comfortable. You gotta learn how to deal with being uncomfortable in the sport and make it comfortable. Being uncomfortable nice. should be the norm. And after I heard him say that, like it was like, Yeah, bro, you shouldn't I had to switch up what I was doing because I was comfortable. Now I'm always uncomfortable. Like I just came back from camp in Puerto Rico. You feel me? I hate camp, but <laughs> got me in crazy shape, got me ready to go. I missed it, my girl. I missed it, my car and my bed and my rabbits, but I had to do what I had to do. I made myself uncomfortable. The elevation is higher over there. It's hot. The heat is ridiculous. You know what I mean? But I was in the gym with a whole bunch of hungry ass dudes, a whole bunch of hungry motherfuckers that literally that and I wasn't in like 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 San Juan. I was in the hood in Guayama. You feel me? Like I I was with I was with the hungry motherfuckers, the niggas that, that want it. So with that being said, you have to like you have to put yourself how they like out there like that. You have to know what it is. You have to force yourself, will yourself to finish and fix and do what you need to do. Because let's get it let's 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 keep it a band. Not everyone can box. Not everyone is gonna get in the ring. And that's true. But at the same time, not everyone's gonna sacrifice what they need to sacrifice to be the best, to be a world champion. And even sometimes mm-hmm. when they do sacrifice what they need to sacrifice, boxing is a sport where it might not even give you nothing. It might slap you right. on the ass and tell you to have a good day. So you just got you gotta just grind. You gotta grind and persevere and push. Right. And all those valid points, like now now I can go on forever, like you know, Jermaine fighting Jamal Herring, that was a that was a really good fight. Very good fight. Because Jamal is a really good he's a grinder too. I mean, ex Marine and he went all out in his last fight, and Jermaine just happened to win that fight. And he J- Jermaine is a very skilled boxer. I mean, unbelievable. And you know, like you said, like there's robots like Vasily Lomachenko, but the robot got shut down by uh, Telefino Lopez, and you know. Well, can I give it, you the ban? With 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 that fight, I feel like Lomo was just too small. You think so? Yeah, he's just. I've seen him in real life. He's he's really small. You know what I mean? And Telefino Lopez is a big dude. I've seen him at nationals many times. He's a big guy. Oh, and okay. I just I just feel like Lomo moving up in weight. I feel like Lomo can deal with boy Haney because it doesn't because Haney is is a talented fighter. Don't get it twisted, but it doesn't seem like he has that much power or he's that strong. He's more he's gonna use his boxing skills. I think Lomo has better skills. 
And if Lomo don't have to worry about power or the strength, it's going to be a little different. Now, I also think that Lomo versus Jamonte Davis would be a good fight, too, because he's shorter and compact. Now, he can punch and he's fast as hell, but he's got shorter arms. he got shorter legs. So that would be a little bit better for Lomo, but he's still got to worry about the power. But Lomo got a crazy defense, so this homie got to hit him. That's the problem um, with him, though, is he – He's cocky in his own mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he thinks he can take a few rounds, like one through three or four, and he thinks, okay, I learned this guy's strategy, and then he goes with it. But that's what happened with Lopez. Lopez said, no, fuck you. I'm going against you, motherfucker, and I'm going to beat your ass. And he did. He, he, he tried to drown Lopez. This is what happened. He thought Lopez was going to get tired. He was going to stop him late. So he tried to turn up, but Lopez turned up with him. And Lopez yes. was getting tired, but Lopez was already ahead. He knew he was ahead. So Lopez didn't have to win certain rounds. So he was, he just had to do enough to keep homie off. And Lopez hits hard. Lopez is fast. Lopez got mm -hmm. good angles. Lopez is a, is a good, great fighter. So with that being said, when he tried to turn up, like, yeah, you might have got the better of him, but he's right here with you and you're not stopping him. You have to you have to work the whole fight. And I feel like that's what Lopez and I mean that's what Lomo learned. When like it's not the same with the little guys, because your punches ain't the same. You know what right. I mean? Now these guys are gonna be more durable, they're gonna be able to take more. So now you gotta work more and you gotta work longer. You can't you can't take half the fight off and then think you're gonna you're gonna stop this kid. No, because now not only did he now he got six rounds. That's six rounds he just won. That's six rounds of confidence. So now yes, you have absolutely. you only got six rounds to bust down his confidence. But if you lose one or two of those rounds, you lost the fight. If he, you don't stop him, you pretty much lost. Long. He waited too long. Yeah, but that's just a learning experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just he didn't I don't think he thought Lopez hit as hard as he did. And when he got in the ring, he had to adjust. And he just couldn't, he just didn't adjust. He thought he was going to be able to drown him. And Lopez has got hard. Lopez ain't no, ain't no bitch. He a warrior. So I would yeah. like to see them. Well, I mean, Lopez went up to 140, but I would have loved to see them rematch. I just think the thing about Lopez, and it it happens in sports too, is that his his dad just needs to let him fight and leave him. Like, don't, he doesn't need to talk like that, you know? Like, it was a good fight and it's like it's it's not it, it's just not something that he should have done but i mean lopez just lost his last not this last fight he won the one before he lost but he's a he he's got heart that kid lopez is a beast now the thing that makes me mad is all everybody was on the joe smith wagon and he just got his ass beat so like I, I'm not a I'm, like I don't respect some of the fighters out there that like like Joe Smith I really don't like whatsoever because he was so cocky and stuff and he he got his ass beat and he got his ass beat in the second round straight up knockout by that uh, what's his name he was a um was he was he Russian yeah I think he was Russian and he just beat him down but. You know, the this is what I mean. Like, boxing is getting exciting again. And people need to realize that. And, and you know, it's not all about UFC. I love UFC. I, I, I love MMA and stuff. But boxing is on the comeback. And a lot of great fights are happening. And people don't understand. It's happening on ESPN and Showtime. It, like, it's, yeah, but you, know, but you know what it is? Good fights are happening, but it's not the fights that people want to see. And I'm gonna keep it a band with you. Like the guys you just named, boxing fans, like boxing, boxing fans know them. Casual fans don't know these guys. The fights that casual fans wanna see, they wanna see Ryan Garcia, Triple G. Haney, Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, um, um, um Ken Box Jr., Garcia or 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 Javante Davis versus Devin Haney, Javante Davis versus um Ken Balls Jr. Pitbull versus any of them. They want to see those are the big guys right now. They want to see these guys fight, and everyone is pussyfooting around except for Devin Haney. Devin Haney went went all over there to um to um Australia and whooped and did work. Did what he was supposed yep. to do. Did mm -hmm. what he said. 
took all them belts. Respect. He doing what he's supposed to do. All these other guys, they over here pussyfooting around like, no disrespect, but Javante Davis should not have fought Roley Romero. What the fuck has Roley Romero done to, to, to fight Javante Davis? Nothing. He talked his way into a match, and he was talking too much shit. Javante was like, all right, boom, now let's fight him. But all right, now you just knocked him out. That's the, the, We all knew that was going to happen. It was pretty easy for him to do that. Now it's time for you to let's fight one of these top guys. Let's fight a Ryan Garcia. And I'm not even a big fan of Ryan Garcia, but I liked how he looked in his last fight. He looked at all right. He looked at on point. Let's fight him. Let's H- Haney's calling you out and let, putting all the belts on the line. Let's fight him. Kim Bolts, I think he's about to fight Haney again, but he's there too. You can do a rematch with Cruz. There's there's fights out here, and these guys are just not they're not doing them. You know what I mean? Now I'm not in anyone's camp. I'm not behind the scenes, so I don't know exactly what's going on because. Big fights like that is big money, so people want to get what, what they worth, and I completely understand that. But sometimes it's just, bro, this one's gonna gonna make you make so much more money. Let's go. Just do, sometimes you gotta just do it, like Spence and Crawford. Just do it, bro. Like everyone's talking shit. Da da da. I'm not gonna lie, and this is just me. It's, it should be fifty fifty because there's mm-hmm. no because because anyone can say whatever they want to say. Oh, um, Spence is the champ. Okay, yeah, you're right. He's the champ. But Crawford is one of the most is one of the most fucking um avoided fighters. And he he's avoided. Not only is he avoided, at the same time, there is no fight without Terrence Crawford. It's not just okay, or else mention whatever, whatever. You need Terrence Crawford to be to be that big fight. So 50-50. It shouldn't it shouldn't be at the most 60-40. Spence, because maybe, yeah, he's the champion, whatever, whatever. But other than that, no. It shouldn't be no less than 60. There should be no more than 60 40. Spence, you know Spence I mean? has been waiting. Difficult. Spence has been waiting on that belt for too long. Yeah. I, you know, I honestly feel like Spence doesn't want to fight Crawford. I f- then This is my opinion. I feel like Crawford stops Spence within like six to eight rounds. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a Spence fan. If they fight soon, I'm not a Spence fan whatsoever. And Uh, I'm not a fan of his style, but Spence he's 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 a real ass he's a real ass dude. He's a bad he's a bad dude. He comes to fight. He got he body attack is crazy. He's gonna be in shape. But I just feel that Terrence Crawford is the way he computes is so much faster. He got so many different styles. He has so many different tools and so many different weapons. I just, I just feel that he beats, he beats Spence. And I mean, I think he's a little small, but he's talking about moving up to 154 and fighting the Charlos. I think he whooped the Charlos asses too. One, oh, not both of them. The, um, I don't know his name, but I can't stand him. But Charlo at 54, I feel like he gets him too. Well, the thing that gets me is, you know, like you said, everybody. Remember, like we talk about this. Me and you could talk boxing for days, but people want to. People think there's there's going to be a Mayweather again. People think there's going to be a Pacquiao again. It's not going to happen yet. It's not. It's not in the picture yet. No. You know how I'm saying though, like a a casual boxing thing. It is. It's Canelo. Canelo is that and Triple G. And Triple G. Ah, uh, Triple G is up there, but he's not. He's not Canelo. No matter. It, listen, it don't matter when Canelo's fighting, where Canelo's fighting. Everyone's tuned in. Everyone yeah. knows Canelo. He's that guy. Even after his L, whatever, whatever, he gonna come back. I think he's gonna beat Triple G easy, and he's gonna go back up and wait. And I think he might be. And I think he can beat that guy. I think he just, he just went in there like I'm the man drinking his Kool Aid and didn't do what he was supposed to do. Now he, homie lost. Now he got something to prove. Now Canelo will go back up, and Canelo's gonna be on that ass. It's gonna be different. Canelo's a hell of a fighter, and he's the he's the guy right now. Now we don't we don't have someone else that we want that we really want him to fight. There's not really another big name like that, except for the guy that just beat him. And that guy beating him made him a big big name. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Canelo is the Mayweather, the Pacquiao. That's that's him. And then the underlings, you feel me? You got 
Davis, Haney, and Garcia. Those are the next. Those are the next guys. Everyone's like, all right, which one of you guys is gonna be the next king? You know what I mean? And then we got we got um Boosie too. Boosie a badass dude, bro. Like, and yeah, and this is a bad motherfucker. That's the future right there as well. You know what I mean? We got we got and if anyone gonna be Mayweather esque, it's him. He a bad dude, bro. Boosie is nasty. That guy who was on Belenga's card, the last fight. Um, I think his name is Xavier. Uh, Xavier um Vega Vargas or um Alexander. One fifty five, one fifty four. Yeah, he's nice, man. He just he just fought on a Lopez card. He knocked someone out in the second round. First yeah, round. he's he's dirty with them hands, man. He's someone to, he's like nineteen. Yeah, he's young. He's a yeah. He's a, he's a force to be reckoned with, and he's gonna be fighting at. I I see him fighting at one sixty very soon. He's he's a big. He's a badass. He he's the future too. I can't wait to see more out of him. There's a lot of guys out here that are about to make their mark or getting ready to make their mark. They just they not in the public eye yet. You gotta you gotta give them a little bit. Like I'm a big fan of him. He's he's ooh. he's he's dirty, right? Yeah. He's, he's filthy with the hands. He is, and he'll knock a motherfucker out in like seconds. And you know the the thing is, is like going back to it. You know, does does anybody know who the fuck Zab Judah is? Does anybody know who, you know, the fight with uh, Jermaine Taylor, who I used to love seeing fight Jermaine Taylor. And he would he fought Kelly Pavlik and Ke- Pavlik got knocked on his ass. Yo, I was just and... watching that fight like two days ago. Yo, Kelly right? Pavlik is a beast. Oh my goodness. Yo, I never really watched Kelly Pavlik growing up. I just started watching him. Bruh. The balls on that man, the heart of that man. Yo, Kelly Pavlik has definitely earned a fan for life. Like I want to meet Holmes. I need a picture with Kelly. I I'm I, I'm a huge fan of Kelly right now. I've been watching him all week. He's a fucking oh my god, yo the heart that yo. I was just watching that fight like god damn. I watched that what fight. I was watching that fight with my boy, and it was just like it like total change of emotion. Like oh shit, Jermaine just knocked him on his ass because like you expect Jermaine Taylor to fucking beat the shit. He comes over, he fucking knocks Pavlik on his ass. Pavlik gets up, gets him in the corner, and just fucking beats the ever living shit out of him. I was like, oh. Like, where did that come from? Yeah, it was like the dopest thing ever. I was like, holy shit. Did, yo, another one like that, Diego Corrales versus Castillo. That was at Foxwoods. That was another crazy back and forth. I thought Corrales was done, come back and knock homie out. Same round, got knocked down twice in the same round, gets back up and puts him to sleep. Like crazy comeback show. The suit oh mad heart. Dale Crowds one of my favorite fighters also. I love I love Chico. Like, bro, that he could fight. Flat yeah, footers I mean, hell, he could fight. Yeah, I mean the you know, everybody knows the Durans, the Ali's, they know that, but it's it's funny because like growing up, I watched like Zab Judah. And Zab Judah was an undercard to some things, and it's like he was a really good fighter. He had a lot of belts under his arm, you know. Yeah, like Zab Judah, he he always, whenever it was the big fight, the big one, the one that mattered, he always lost. I know, and I don't, and I don't know <laughs> I if know. that was, huh? No, I was saying I know. <laughs> I felt and the same. I don't way. know if that was, and I feel like Zab Judah when he was. In his prime, I feel like he drank his Kool Aid too much, and he thought he was—he thought he could just do whatever he wanted. He had all the skills in the world, but you have to be disciplined, also. And that—then that's what hurt him, and that's what's hurting Adrian Broner right now. No discipline, and I—I I can't say this about Zab because I was young and I really didn't get to like they didn't have all this um, social media back then, so I really didn't get to see like. 
behind the scenes with him, but I seen like he was always in the hood. You know what I mean? I seen a, I seen mm-hmm. a video of him beating some dude up when he was playing craps. You feel me? Like Adrian Broner, yeah. he's always in the hood and he's around a whole bunch of yes men. He's around a whole bunch of dudes that telling him he's not doing no wrong. You're the, you're doing this. You're great. Yeah, da, da. you can't have a whole bunch of yes men around you. You got to have someone that's letting that, that that's your boy that's keeping it real with you. Nah, you fucking up. Nah, you look stupid right now. Bro, what are you doing? This is dumb. Like, yo, don't, don't listen to him. He don't got no one of them people around you. He only got, he only, he's like a big child. And he only got people like, oh, yeah, champ. Yeah, champ. I'm going to brush your waves. I'm going to brush your waves. Like, nah, get off that man's dick, bro. Don't brush his waves. That's, a, like, that's embarrassing. I don't know. Yo, when I seen that, I was like, oh, y'all serious? Like, Bro, if I told if if I, if I had waves after a fight and I put and I gave my dad a comment like yo brush my waves nigga, you know what my dad would do to me? He would slap the dog shit out of me. That's that, that sounds crazy. Like who who, who like, brush my hair? Who are you talking to like that? That sound crazy. And and they just over here doing it like oh I'm a brother brush your hair I'm your bitch like nah bro y'all bugging y'all need to let like. He he drank his Kool-Aid way too early. And there was a time where he was up next. And he just didn't he didn't he didn't take the, the brass ring and run with it. He tried to, but he did he tried to do it the wrong way and he and it slipped through his fingers. Now, now he just he just retired. Yeah. So tell me, and this is like a thing that bothers me because it's kind of like I'm a supporter of mental health awareness at one point, but at the same time, it's with Adrian Broner, which he was about to fight Omar Figueroa Jr. And, you know, Adrian Broner put on his Instagram, you know, I'm going through mental health things and stuff like that, which, you know, then... He then Figura comes out and says, "I don't believe you. I think you're full of shit." Like, I mean, what what do you what do you think of, of that? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not in that man's skin, so mm-hmm. I can't tell you if he's having a mental breakdown. It's very possible he had a mental breakdown this week. I look at it like this: from past experiences with Adrian Broner, he lulls in training. He bullshits. He comes to fights out of shape. He doesn't do what he needs to do. And when it comes to mental health, you know where your mental health is at. This was a two-month training camp you had, bro. You know mm-hmm. where your mental health is before. Like, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I, they wanted me to fight on the Rhode Island card, the one that, we, that was before this. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yep. And they caught me. The March like, card. Yeah. And they called me. They was like, "Yo, Juan, we need you for, for um the the to win Rivers return or whatever." So the, the Rhode Island return, da 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 da. My mental health wasn't on point to train how I need to train and to fight. So I let them know, like, "Yo, I can't, I can't do what I need to do for this fight. I'm not, I'm not even trying to, not even trying to do it. Just link me in with the next one, and I'll be on point." And they linked me in with the next one, and quiet is kept. I'm. My mental is still not where it needed to be, but I pushed it to the side and, and I trained my ass off and I did what I had to do. You know what I mean? It's the week of the fight. I'm still going through a whole bunch of shit, ups and downs all around, but it is what it is. I put my shit to the side, I put my feelings to the side of me and I do what I got to do. You feel me? And that's the fight game. Most most boxers, they deal with mental health issues. Most boxers, they're bipolar. Most boxers are not all there. You have to you have to be a certain kind of crazy to literally get punched in your face for fun. And when I say fun, people are like, oh, you're getting paid, but yo, all the sparring we do, we don't get paid to spar. Well, some of us do. Right. But not all yeah. of us getting paid to spar. You literally getting jumped in jumping in the ring, getting punched in your face for free. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot you have people have to understand that. So most boxes are off. Most boxes are not all there. And with, with that being said, if it, it's like a clinic, like the clinic, like his doctor saying like, yo, bro, you shouldn't fight. Listen to your doctor. That's fine. But if it's just Adrian Broner taking an easy way out, which it sounds like it is because Figueroa is going to be a tough fight. Overall, Figueroa is a style that beats him. He has a Madonna type of style. That style fucks up Adrian Broner because Adrian Broner likes to wait. 
and he doesn't let you wait. He's on your ass the entire fight. So I feel like Broner felt like he was going to lose, and he pulled the mental health card. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. You know what I mean? If Because I, I mm-hmm. understand mental health is a, is a serious thing, but I don't care what no one says. That depression and all that, like, I've been, I've, been, I've fought through depression too. I fought Joe Wilson. I was depressed as hell. I went in there and I did what I had to do. It, You know what I mean? It wasn't yep. my best performance, but I stopped him and I looked it fine. It is what it is. Move on to the next one. I, but I knew I was in shape to go fight because I knew I did what I needed to do. So at the end of the day, no matter what, you got to be in the gym. You got to be on your shit. If you're not on your shit and that's why you pulled out, that's not mental health, bro. You knew what it was for two months. You could have pulled out last month because you wasn't on your shit. You could have pulled out three weeks ago because you wasn't on your shit. You knew what you was doing. You wait till the week of the fight to be like, oh, I'm not fighting mental health issues. Like, dog. And I feel like right after Danny Garcia came and did that little, like, oh, mental health, whatever, whatever. Now a lot of fighters are like, oh, mental health this, mental health that. And I'm not saying, like, men ain't going through nothing because you got to understand. Men no, go I get through, what you're saying. Men go through a lot. And we're, we are the highest when it comes to suicide and all that. We die early because we don't, we don't, we keep everything in. We lock it up. We don't speak, we don't speak on our feelings because the way, the way the world is set up, you the bitch if you talk about your feelings. You're soft if you're this, that, and the third. And with all that being said, boxing is not worth your life. So if he's really on, like, yo, my mental health is fucked up and I need to go fix this, bro, go fix your shit, bro. And mm-hmm. he come back better than ever. But from what it looks like, it doesn't look like no mental health with him. It looks like he didn't train right. He knew he was going to lose and he pulled out because you know what's going on weeks before the fight. Now, with that being said, something could have happened to trigger him throughout the week. Could very be, possible. yeah. Could be. It's very possible. I don't know. Me, me personally, if I'm in shape, there ain't nothing that's going to stop me from doing what I need to do. I'm going in there, I'm fucking you up, and it it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, that's I don't know. That's that's my opinion. A lot of people, cause I made a post about it actually, and a lot of people were talking shit to me like, "Oh, you don't know what," I, and I don't know what that man's going through. But uh, from the outside looking in, it doesn't look like you ain't never. He ain't never complained about mental health before. We know he's nutty as hell, but he don't ever. He ain't never complained about mental health. He ain't never nothing, nothing, nothing. Now out the blue, you complain mm-hmm. about mental health. There's no history of you complaining about mental health. No history of you pulling out of fights because you were depressed or anything like that. It just came out of nowhere. It don't sound to me like it's mental health. It sounds to me like you didn't train how you were supposed to train. You was out here partying and bullshit, and you knew you was about to lose, so you was like, fuck it. And that's my opinion. I hope I'm wrong, because I'm actually a big fan of Adrian Brown. You feel me? The care, man. Anyone can get it. That man funny as hell. But I'm a realist, and I'm gonna yeah. and I'm gonna and I'm gonna speak on what I feel is real. You feel me? It don't sound like it was any mental health to me. That's just my opinion. I don't I don't know homie. Like I ain't I can't go. Oh, what's up, yeah, I don't know him. But from what I'm looking at and from how it sounds, it sounds like he didn't want to fight or he wasn't ready to fight. I but just like you opinion. said. Like you said, I think he's he's just a, a crazy in his own way type of deal. Like I remember him like I used to call him Mini Floyd because he'd go all flashy like Floyd did, like exactly the same. Like he'd have the robes all the same and like he he talk like like Bayweather and he dude could bring it. He could bring it. And you know, I I hope he doesn't have a mental health issue, but at the same time, it's like it's between it's it's him his mindset. So the only one who knows what's really wrong or what's not wrong is Adrian Broner, because the guy's not going to admit that he, you know, you you're not going to have physical evidence like hey, like I just, here I checked into a hospital or hey I need meds or hey I need this. Like it's nobody's no, business, no, but no, Adrian Brown is own. You can have physical evidence. My psychiatrist is telling me this. This is what he boom boom boom. 
<clears throat> and then it's like, all right, well, you're seeing a psychiatrist. You're trying to get your mental health on point. No one can be mad at you. But if you're not seeing those psychiatrists and you're not doing nothing, like, I don't, that's my thing. If there's no paper trail towards, like, okay, I'm depressed, like, then how do you know you're depressed? You don't know what the hell it is. I didn't know I was depressed until I was diagnosed with it. I, I was like, what? Oh, this is depression? Oh, uh-huh, okay. Wow, it sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I can honestly, I can honestly say, hey, I ain't never pulled out of no fight because of depression at all. You feel me? Ever. Does it help for sure? Does fighting help that? No, that, that doesn't help because people got to understand this too. There's a lot of pressure on us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of pressure on us to win, to train hard. All of our friends is looking is looking at us. People we don't know is looking at us. Kids are looking up to us. There's a lot. And like people can be like, oh, whatever, whatever. You're just reasonable. Yo, I have a lot of kids that come up from my city and be like, yo, I want to be like you. That's a lot of pressure on you, not only to be good, you know what I mean, but to also fight good, look good, win. You know what I mean? You have to carry yourself a certain way. Like now, if you would have seen me how I was in the amateurs, I was a little wild. You know what I mean? I'd be posting wild stuff on Facebook. I was chilling on the block with my friends. I didn't care. I was down the street fight. It was what it was. I can't be like that anymore. I can't. I have to watch my P's and Q's. People are looking up for me. People are looking out for me. You know what I mean? I can't just do what I want to do. I have to I have to think about like, damn, if I post this, will I, will I make anyone uncomfortable or pissed off? Uh, it's not a good look for up and yeah. I have to I have to think like that. That's a lot of that's a lot of shit to go down on it. A lot of people are putting weight like, and they don't even realize they're putting this weight on your back. But they're putting this weight on your back. It comes to a point where you like people that understand, like, I got a whole city on my back. Springfield don't got a lot of undefeated, like real up and comers. They got me, Josh, Tony, um, Rollin, um, Denzel Whitley, my my my, my man's um Carlos, a DJ doing his thing. We got some fighters, but we don't got a lot of us. You feel me? And then mm-hmm. a lot with consistency neither. There's not a lot that are fighting consistently. So with that being said, like, yeah, I got my city on my back. Josh Orther got the city on his back. Then the Whitley got the city on his back. You feel me? Like we we pushing up, and that's and then they they Holyoke. It's the same city, but it's different. You know what I mean? So they got Holyoke on their back. They pushing it up. Me and Josh got Springfield on our back. Tony got Springfield on his back. We pushing it up. We trying to be the first ones to do it. So that's a lot of pressure, and that's a lot of mental stress. And then not only mm-hmm. that, like, bro, I want to change the life for my family. I'm trying to make sure my girl's good. Like my shorty about to my shorty about to get spinal surgery. And we had no oh. idea. We had no idea when it was gonna happen. It could happen the day before my fight. It can happen on my fight. When they call her, she has to go, she has to go run in. You feel me? All training camp. I had to go to Puerto Rico thinking, like, damn, what if they call her for, for her surgery? What if they do this? What if they do that? That's that shit is depressing. That shit is sad. I don't want to see my yeah. girl lay down for ten months or 10, 10 weeks all fucked up. You know what I mean? But they caught for the fight. I'm in I train. I busted my ass. I'm in shape. I'm on weight. I'm ready to go. And no matter what happens on fight night, the only thing that's gonna be in my head is fighting this motherfucker. You feel me? Last time I fought, my best friend died. You feel me? Yeah. Put in, mm-hmm. banged out. Grieved after. That's it's just shit you have to it's just shit. Sometimes you gotta push it to the side. And I'm not saying it's always the healthiest way, like that shit fucked me up. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't fight the next fight. I was fucked up. I was still grieving and sad as shit and was like, yo, I don't even know if I want to train anymore. Like, this shit is sad. I got out my funk, I popped it up, and now I'm still doing it. Now instead of me being sad, I'm mean, like, damn, you know, I wish my best friend was here. My best friend's always on with me. She always looking down. She with me when I train, when I run, when I fight. That's you know what I mean. You gotta put just you put yourself in a different mindset. But people like people have to understand. That's why I don't. I don't know. I'm just a type, I'm a type of person. It's really hard to bring me down mentally. You know what I mean. You can say whatever the hell you want to say. I believe in myself. Even like shit. I'm going through shit right now. Like I'm shit. I'm not gonna talk about, but it's. It is what it is, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I gotta push through it. I gotta make sure I get this bag, I get this bread. 
I gotta do what I gotta do. My girl doing the same shit. She busting her ass. She doing what she gotta do. Until we know exactly what's going on. And it sucks. We're in limbo. She's in limbo. Like, but we on it. And she's she's helping me just as much. She's going to the gym with me. You know what I mean? She can't really do nothing because she's all fucked up. But like, she'll go gonna sit in a hot tub, wait for me to do what I need to do. And then come out, we leave. You know what I mean? She's also like, she's not dieting, but she won't eat in front of me or nothing like that. So, you know what I mean? And I know she's going through her own shit with her with, with, with the back and it's sad and wound. Right. I know she's yeah. about it, but she pushed that shit to the side and she's doing what she needs to do for me. And that's not even me asking her. That's her just loving me and being like, all right, we got this and we're going to fuck shit up. And that's, that's my other half. She's very strong. You know what I mean? And like, even when I'm like, yo, babe, just like, chill, lay down. Let's relax. I'm going to go do this. No, I got you. Da, 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 da. She's a strong ass woman. And yes. I'm saying if she can get through get through that and not to mention the other shit she, she's going through, she can get through that. Yeah. Agent Broner should have been able to fight. Oh, well, I tell you, Miss Maria is a very nice person. Always looking out. Even even me, who hasn't even seen me before, you know, it and always respectful to me. It makes me laugh because she she got anger, but it's funny anger. She, she's so little. It's, it's, it's cute when she gets mad. It's like, oh, what you doing? It's like a chihuahua. <laughs> if she got mad at me, I'd say, oh, here's a bunny. <laughs> she definitely wouldn't be mad no more. <laughs> so Saturday is the big fight night. I'll be there. Uh, the city of Springfield will be with you. Uh, my wife will be there. Uh, man, it's, it's just going to be a crazy ass night and it's going to be good. And can't wait for it. Listen, you made the best movie when you had the interview that said, hey, uh, you know, what are you going to do tonight? I'm going to fucking win. <laughs> And I thought it was going to be spectacular. <laughs> going to be spectacular. All fun. So, Mike Agundo. I'm not going to lie. That interview mixed in with the fight, the dance, and the knockout was fire. I didn't even plan any of that. <laughs> That's how... So, thank you, Jalen Renat, for helping me with that. Because that's how I started to really understand and be okay at at TikTok. Because that knockout, I had to mix all my sounds and shit. And then, like, had to get it, like, right on point, And I made it there. So, you're the one who helped inspire the TikTok game for me. <laughs> well, yo, I appreciate that. That's what's up. That's what's up. And, yo, you made a dope-ass TikTok of that, y'all. I, I still be sharing that, yo. <laughs> the, the Jermaine... Uh, was it Jermaine? Jermaine McDonald. Uh, Jermaine McDonald, yeah. Yo, Sorry, he just Jermaine knocked out. He, he just knocked out um Evan Holyfield. Oh shit. Yep. He just knocked out Evan Holyfield. They're about to rematch. He knocked him out in the second round with the same overhand punch that I knocked him out with. He wants you again. He's gonna want you again. Why? I'm not gonna fight him again. It made no sense. He, he, he didn't even make weight. Maybe he'll lose it just for you to fight him. Nah, I won't fight him again. We, even, <laughs> he, even if he wins. I mean, maybe if he wins, I guess it'll be, I guess I'm out of it. But, like, there's nothing in it for me. I already beat him. <laughs> and not only did I beat him, I stopped, I knocked him out. There's nothing There's nothing in it for me to fight him again. There's nothing in him in it for him to fight me again. Just he could maybe win, um, erase, erase a, a win. But, honestly, he wouldn't. It would be worse this time. I'm in way better shape than I was when I fought him. I'm doing way more stuff than I. I'm doing way more strength and conditioning. So, it, I mean, and it's no disrespect to him. It's just style. No. It's just how I fight, how he fights. He will. He. I'm gonna walk him into something. And that, that's all. That's that. Honestly, that's what happened last time. I didn't even throw it to knock him out. He just walked into a good punch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I finished it with the hook. And I was waiting for it all night. I knew it was going to come. I was like, all right, it's going to come. It's going to come. I set it up. I waited for it. And 
it probably wouldn't be the same punch, but it would be the same. It would be the same way. I'm, you know what I mean? And that's that's just my opinion. And there's no well, disrespect. A, he's, he's a good fighter because he just beat Evan Holyfield, and so he's clearly can fight. Well, what is it called? Like a like a trust fall where like people are trying to hold, like get you so you don't fall. Yep, trust it's, fall. It, well, it looked like nobody was there for him to fall. Like he fell like like this. He just he just went just out. No, that honestly, was, that was a crazy knockout. Yeah, that was that was that was a dope knockout. I'm not gonna lie, I don't get tired of watching that knockout. And um, the DMX I didn't realize after. how hurt he was until I turned back around and seen his arms, and I was like, oh, his arms are rubber. He can't even get up. Then I was like, oh, he's out, out. He don't know where he's at. But um, yo, I'm just happy that I got the win that night, and he was safe and healthy after the fight, and able to go get some good wins after that. You know what I mean? God bless him, and um, God bless his journey, whatever he's trying to do in this boxing game. So, Jalen, thank you for coming on the show as always. You know know you're always welcome on the show. Always on the show. So, Michael Ogundo. Ogundo? I can't pronounce his name. I tried. So, Michael, if you hear this, sorry if I messed up your name. Um, so that's your match. There's a bunch of great fighters on the card and, um, yeah, we'll see you Saturday. Everybody, if you, if you need tickets, please support Jalen, buy them from him at boxing's favorite boxer or where else can they buy them from, from you, Jalen? You can hit me up on Facebook at Jalen Renaud. You can hit me up on Instagram, boxing's favorite boxer. Um, you can hit my dad up at Michael Hagler. You can hit my girl up at Maria Castro. And we all, we dropping tickets off. We're coming in hot. And I will tell you, because Miss Maria, how nice she is, told me you have the $50 ones and you have three one fifteen or 110 I have like, yeah, two or, or three one tens left. And then I got general admission the $49. Okay, well, motherfuckers, take care of this. Buy some tickets. It's a good night. You can gamble, you can drink, you can eat, and you can watch some good ass boxing. And watch this dude right here. And after the fight, you can party with boxing's favorite boxer. I'm not going to drink, but I'm about to be on the dance floor. I I can't do that with you, bro. Well, I'm going to gamble a little bit. I'm going to gamble a little bit, too. All right, we'll play some blackjack or something. Facts, facts. All right, Jalen. Well, thank you. And everybody, Maddie C Sports, follow Jalen. Boxing's favorite boxer. Pretty much everything on social media is Boxing's favorite boxer from this man. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you later. See you.